Parallel Circuit Analysis with Ohm's Law. Here we have a parallel circuit and we would like to find all of the values for resistance in the circuit, in other words the resistance of the total circuit as well as all the individual components which are in this case already given to us. We'd, find, we'd like to find the current through every part of the circuit and we'd like to find the voltage across every part of the circuit and we'd like to find the power dissipated by every part of the circuit and the entire circuit together. First of all, a parallel circuit has more than one branch. If we were to consider conventional current which flows from positive to negative, the conventional current has two different branches. One which current part of the current flows through R1 and then back to the negative terminal. The other current goes from the positive terminal through R2 and back to the negative terminal. Because resistance 2 or branch 2 has less resistance, it would have more current flowing through it than branch 1 or resistor 1. If we were to consider individual electrons, individual electrons come from the negative terminal and have a choice. They may either flow through R1 and then back to the positive terminal, or an individual electron can flow through R2 and then back to the positive terminal. So there is two different paths for the electricity to flow. We can simplify this circuit to be a circuit with only one resistance by combining R1 and R2. We would be tempted to add the two resistors together, but that would not be correct. In a parallel circuit, the resistance is always less than the least resistor. Therefore, this circuit must have less resistance than 16 ohms. So we know that 64 would not be correct. So let's begin by finding the total resistance of this circuit. One formula we can use for finding total resistance is called the product over sum formula. The product over sum formula is R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Notice that this formula has parentheses indicating that the calculations of multiplication and addition should be done before the division calculation. Let me bring over a calculator and we'll try it out. First we would type in R1, which is 48 ohms, times R2, which is 16 ohms. Then press divide, and then 48 plus 16. Watch very carefully now. I get the answer 32. Oops, clearly something's wrong. 32 is greater than 16 and we just said that we know the value cannot be greater than 16. So what did I do wrong? What I did wrong was I did not tell my calculator to do the addition before the division. To do that we use the parentheses keys of the scientific calculator. So if I were to type it in just as it's written here I would press left parentheses and then 48 times 16, right parentheses, and then divided by left parentheses 48 plus 16, right parentheses, and then equals, and I get the correct value of 12. So what I did with my calculator was I typed in this 48 times 16 divided by the quantity 48 plus 16 in other words I put the parentheses keys around the two calculations that have to be done before the division now actually I don't really have to type in the parentheses for the first calculation see if I do like this 48 times 16 divided by, I get an intermediate result, which is the 
48 times 16, which equals 768. And then I would use the left parentheses to force the addition 48 plus 16 before the division occurs, and I get the correct result. So use your parentheses keys to group things that need to be calculated before they're divided or otherwise. Now the other formula I could use for this is called the product, I'm sorry, the, the reciprocal formula. We just use the product over some formula. We could also use the, the reciprocal formula. The reciprocal formula is 1 divided by the quantity 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. That would give us the same values. Let me try that on my calculator. So I would type in, to do this, I would first type in the first resistance value, which is 48. And I would divide it into 1. Now to divide something into 1, you could type 1 divided by 48, but it's a little bit awkward to do that. It's much easier to type in to press the 1 over x key or the reciprocal key. So if I press that, that gives me the reciprocal of 48, which is 1 divided by 48. Then I press plus. Now I type in the second resistance, which is 16. Press 1 over x to get the reciprocal of 16. And that gives and then I press equals to get the sum of those two values. Now I still have to take one more reciprocal. In other words, I need to take this quantity here, 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2, and divide that into 1. Again, the reciprocal key is just what I need. If I press the reciprocal key, I get the answer of 12 ohms. So here's what I, what I did. I, using the calculator, I calculated this. I typed, in, I typed in the first value of 48 ohms and pressed 1 over x, and that gave me 0 0.02083. Then I typed in 16 and pressed the 1 over x key and added it to that. And what, it, what the calculator actually did was it added 0 0.02083 to 0 0.06254, the reciprocals of 48 and 16 and added those together first and that gave, gave 0 0.08335 and then that was divided into 1 by the reciprocal key and that gives me 12 ohms. So you see that formula would work for any number of resistors. In fact that for formula works as well as the product over sum formula but it can be extended out to any number. In other words I could extend it out to three resistors in parallel or four or whatever if I wanted to. But in this case, it works just fine for two. Now let's find the total current. Now that I know the total resistance, we can find the total current in this circuit. Ohm's law can tell us that. Ohm's law says that the current through something is equal to the voltage across that thing divided by the resistance of that thing. So V over R is the formula I want to use here. So then, what what uh, form what voltage and what resistance am I talking about? Well, the general formula for current is voltage divided by resistance, but in this case I'm talking about the total voltage or the voltage of the power supply divided by the resistance of the entire circuit or RT. So that would be 144 volts divided by 12 ohms, which would give me 12 amperes. Now I'd also like to calculate the branch currents, or the currents through R1 and R2. Again, Ohm's law would be the same for this. It would be voltage divided by resistance. And for these two values, then I would use the same formula, but there would be different values for the, for the uh, resistance. So because it's a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same of is also 144 volts. Now a parallel circuit has the same voltage for all parts. So the voltage across R1 is, is also 144 volts and the voltage across R2 is 144 volts. So we simply take that voltage and divide by the resistance of the, each branch circuit. So our volt, the current through R1 then would be 144 volts divided by 48 or 3 amps 
and the current through R2 would be 144 volts divided by 16 ohms or 9 amps. Notice that 9 amps plus 3 amps equals 12 amps. That's Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's law tells us that the branch currents in a parallel circuit must add up to the total current. Now what about the voltages across each part of the circuit? Well, we could use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage across, let's say, R1. And to do that, again, we would use Ohm's law. Ohm's law tells us that the voltage, V or E, is equal to the current times the resistance. So let's use that to calculate the voltage across R1. That would be the current times the resistance of R1. In other words, the current through R1 times the resistance of R1, which would be 3 amps through R1 times 48 ohms of resistance for R1 gives us 144 volts. Well, duh, we already knew the voltage, didn't we? This was a parallel circuit, so we really didn't need to calculate it, but it's neat to see that indeed Ohm's law gives us the right answer even if we did do that. So we really don't need to calculate the voltages in a parallel circuit, do we? If we know the power supply voltage, we can simply know that the, the same voltages are across both of the resistances. Now we come to power. We want to find the power of the individual uh, resistors or the power dissipated in watts. So this time we use power formula. Here's a little memory aid for the power formula. Power equals current times voltage. P equals IV or P equals IE. Either one works. P Sometimes I like to remember Ohm's law as a pi. In fact, often it's drawn, the memory aid is often drawn as a circle that looks kind of like a pi. So if you do that, you put PIE in there and helps you to remember the power formula. If you cover up P, you get the formula for power. Power equals current times voltage. You can also get two other formulas. Current equals power divided by voltage or voltage equals current, uh, I'm sorry, voltage equals power divided by current. But we're not going to need, we don't need those formulas today. We just need the power equals current times voltage. So how would we apply that to these individual resistors? Well, we would use those two formulas and the, uh, we would calculate the power of R1 by multiplying the current through R1 times the voltage across R1. That would be 3 amps times 144 volts gives us 432 watts and the power of R2 would be 9 amps flowing through R2, IR2, times the voltage across R2, which is 144 volts, VR2, and that gives us 1,296 watts. Now, the, the, uh, we could also use the same uh, formula to calculate the total uh, current in the circuit, and that formula would be the total current flowing through the circuit times the total voltage of the circuit it would be 12 amps from the power supply times 144 volts gives us 1728 watts so in other words if we measure the current coming out of the power supply and we know the voltage that it's producing we can multiply the two together and get the total power but the other thing is in a circuit such as any circuit the total power is simply the sum of the individual power. So we could just simply have added the two powers. We could add 432 and 1296 and that would give us our total of 1728 watts. There we have calculated all of the quantities in this circuit. Thank you for watching.